Game day is coming in white hot, and hey, we should probably figure out who on earth these Washington Huskies are. So we got Max Vrooman of UWDogPound.com here to tell us all about his football team. Let's go. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is my favorite people of all time. Yes, you already know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you, the listeners and viewers of Lockdown Spartans. Thank you so much for joining us today. As we lead up to a huge Game 3 against Washington, I'm starting to get a little nervous. I can't lie. And I'm sure that uh, Max Vrooman joining us will not help my nerves whatsoever. But before we get to him and just see how he's doing really quick, missed this on yesterday's show. Sorry, I recorded before this news dropped. But... Starting wing player Jaden Akins is out for weeks. Uh, he had surgery on a stress fracture, stress fracture on his foot. Nothing really to go more into detail there other than he's expected to be healthy by tip-off. But again, if anything else unfolds, we'll get more in-depth to it later. But yes, Jaden Akins out four weeks during training camp. Uh, Max, do you have any thoughts on that injury, by the way? Or do you just want to talk about football, the, the thing I brought you on to actually talk about? Yeah, I've, I've got a five-point plan that I have to go through about that injury. Um, Good. I saw it on sure. Twitter. Okay. That's it. All right. Bada boom, bada bing. There we go. We got the medical diagnosis from there. And uh, Max Ruman guarantees that Jaden Akins will be 100% by tip off. Heard it here first on Lockdown Spartans. Uh, Max, can't thank you enough for joining us off the top here because, I, look, this is a big game coming up. I feel like our teams are kind of similar from a macro level in the sense that, okay, we feel okay with how things are going so far. But at the end of the day, neither team has really faced any good competition in the first two weeks. This is a really broad question. How do you grade how your team has been doing so far this season? Well, considering that last year we started out the season losing to an FCS opponent at home in the opening yeah. game, uh, I think we feel pretty darn good about a pair <laughs> of three-plus touchdown wins, or it was 25 in the first game, and uh, what was that 46 last week against Portland State? So a little bit better showing about an FCS opponent than, we, than we've seen in the recent past. Yeah. So. I think Husky fans are feeling generally pretty good. Uh, this is the first two games of the Kalen DeBoer era. This will be the first real test. I think there's a lot of a lot of cautious optimism about how things have gone so far, but um, at the same time, this is this is going to be a test. The last time that the Huskies beat a ranked non-conference opponent at home was in 2001, and the last time we've even played one was in 2010. So it's wow. last year we were supposed to play or. Uh, Two years ago, we were supposed to play Michigan at home uh, before that got wiped out due to COVID. So this is the first time that there's been kind of a premier non-conference opponent to come in in over a decade. So I think there's a lot of, lot of uh, can't wait for it from the fan base to, to see how this, how this goes. Uh, the only other power conference team in the last few years that have come by is Rutgers, which uh, does not quite yeah. qualify at the same level of excitement. <laughs> Not necessarily. No disrespect to our, our conference friend over there in Piscataway, but I think this is a little different, just like you said right there. Um, and you also said cautiously optimistic as well. And sure, okay, some of that is the two wins. You know, you scored a lot of touchdowns. You didn't lose to an FCS opponent. But in the first year of the Kalen DeBoer era over in Washington, is there something on the field that you're also seeing that is really surprising you, even just two games against, you know, not great opponents into the season? Yeah, I mean, we, we all felt good about the offense coming in. This is a what Kalen DeBoer has been known for from all of yeah. his stops when he was the offensive coordinator at Indiana and then at Fresno State and then the head coach at Fresno State. Uh, he's always had a really good passing game that he's been able to unleash. Um, but last year, the passing game was, frankly, abysmal at Washington, um, which is why the offensive coordinator and head coach both got fired. So uh, there was a new quarterback brought in with Michael Penix Jr., who Michigan State fans may be not so happily familiar with uh, from his yeah. time at Indiana. <laughs> um, but Penix last year was not good in Indiana. Granted, everyone at Indiana was bad last year, so it was really hard to tell whether injuries were going to have taken his toll on him after yep. four straight years of a season-ending injury midway through the year, or whether uh, the the new system wasn't quite going to click right away. But uh, this is now, I believe it's uh, each of the first two games in, I think it's eight possessions that Penix has played, and we scored touchdowns in the first four in both of them, and touchdowns in six of eight uh, in both games. 
So as long as he's been in the game, the offense has just worked like perfection. And again, Kent State, Portland State, this is going to be sure. a, a, a different test. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's that's really where the optimism is coming from. Is just it's a breath of fresh air that this is really the first time since maybe 2016 where it looks like the passing game is just a absolute huge strength for this team. We'll see if that holds up, but right now it, it's looking that way, and that's exciting here. No doubt. And, you know, obviously I want to ask a lot about the offense, a lot about the defense, like specifics with each position group as well. But just one more broad question before getting into that. So right now, kind of what are you feeling like Washington is as far as, you know, how they're perceived nationally? Because right now they got no AP votes for the top 25, you know, despite two blowout wins to start the season. They did get six votes in the USA Today coaches poll. So are you feeling that this is a team that over in Seattle is getting disrespected or is this still about right? Not just a, a top 25 contender just yet in your opinion. Yeah, I, I went through and looked at a few of the kind of computer rankings and the, the ones mm-hmm. that are out there and Washington averaged about 32nd in those. So okay. maybe you could expect a few more votes in the AP poll, but I honestly, it's two games against inferior competition when this is a team that came off a four and eight season and did not, come anywhere close to living up to expectations. So I think it personally, I'm totally fine with any kind of voter saying, let's wait and see how they do against Michigan state before making a judgment on this team. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there's disrespect. I think uh, there's maybe, I guess you could probably find some corners of people who are really down on this team that might not be sure. deserved, but I think it's been totally fair. And uh, this is really where we're going to find out how, what this team is made of. And on yesterday's show, you know, I did a whole segment on why, hey, state fans should maybe feel optimistic about this game, despite being right now, as we record, three and a half point underdogs going to Seattle. Uh, Can you just put a knife in all that right now? I'm going to cut against the grain. Hey, Max, why should Huskies fans feel optimistic about Saturday, a.k.a. What, what's going to make me lose sleep tonight, Max? Just shoot me straight. Let me down, please. So if, if I were trying to build the case for, for why is Washington uh, deservedly a favorite, although I, I will be honest that I don't really see why we're a three and a half point favorite given <laughs> okay. uh, everything yeah. else. So uh, we'll start with that and I'll just go counter to everything you just said and start with the sure. optimism for Michigan <laughs> State. But for Washington, I think the, the big thing is is that difference in the passing game where Peyton Thorne, you know, had a good solid year last year, but um, now lost probably the best running back in college football. And from all indications, it does not look like he has gotten off to a good start. And both the Huskies and uh, the Spartans have not played a top 100 really opponent this year so far, but Penix has averaged, you know, 10 yards per attempt, had one interception. That's the only pass that even came close to being intercepted. Everything else has been on the money, uh, has been averaging well over 300 uh, yards a game in just playing basically three quarters, if that. Uh, and, you know, Thorne's already thrown three picks, completing 54% of his passes. Uh, this is not the, the secondary for once is not necessarily the strength of this Washington team, but um, they do they do have some individual players who have a chance to, to do well here. Um, we The one game we played against Derek Broussard when he was at Colorado didn't really do all that great against Washington. So uh, okay. even though he he has had some big games for them uh, before he transferred to, to Michigan State. Um, so really, I, I think it's it's that difference in the passing game. And, and in football nowadays, that's really what it comes down to. And if Washington is able to consistently put up points with their passing game and Michigan State's relying entirely on, on running the ball in order to try to move it, um, that was a great strategy against the Huskies last year when the run different run defense was was one of the worst I've, I've ever seen. Um, but this year looks to be a little bit better. Um, and uh, now there's actually a coaching staff who, who knows what they're doing and is uh, borderline competent, if not fully competent, which is hey. a welcome change uh, and makes a difference. So, Look at that. And, and, Look at that. <laughs> yeah. And, and the fi- final piece is just that, you know, there has been uh, there's been internally or I guess in the in the area some concern about attendance issues at Husky Stadium and this last Saturday uh, we had due to wildfire smoke it was literally unhealthy to be outside per okay. state public health guidelines and uh, we school has not started yet uh, which means that students aren't all here but um, given what I said about this being such a such a huge matchup um, when Husky Stadium is rocking it is a very very difficult place to play and given this opponent and how everything is setting up 
uh, really think there's a good chance that this is going to be one of those crowds that really can make a difference and is going to make it really tough on opposing offenses. So you've done your job. Sweet. Yeah. Started this uh, chat up here. Not now I'm, now I'm down here. I'm not all the way low, but I- I'm back at baseline right now for my worry for this game. So Max uh, assignment number one complete. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I'm also sorry, Max, cause I got to say goodbye to you really quick. Cause I got to talk to people's ears off about BetOnline.net. That's right. If Max just convinced you to take the Huskies minus three and a half, go run to BetOnline.net, your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Or, hey, take the Spartans plus three and a half. If that still didn't convince you that it will be a Spartan defeat coming up this Saturday, find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's week two NFL games and week three college games. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wages and information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events is at betonline.net. They got it all. MLB news, MMA news, boxing news, golf news. <laughs> Come on now. Golf season's starting up again. It's time to win that cash. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends and actions. That is at BetOnline where the game starts. And as we welcome back Max Vrooman of UWDogPound.com. Hey, thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Max, let's start with the offensive side of the ball because, hey, that's the more intriguing storyline for us state fans, at least, because we have old friend Michael Penix coming in. So far, so good. Is it all good in the hood? Or is there something that has a little iffy on Michael Penix? How, How do you dissect his two games? Uh, there's been nothing uh, that's really iffy on it so far. He threw one pick at the very end of the first half this last game uh, in kind of a two-minute drill situation. Uh, it's the first truly bad throw he's made and the only one he's made so far in a Husky uniform. I think really the concern is just health. How long is he going to be able to, to stay healthy? Um, and as long as he's healthy, though, it, it certainly looks like he has a complete command of this offense. He gets everybody in the right position. Uh, This is a really good skill position group around him. As long as he's able to be kept upright, which I know might be a challenge against how Michigan State started this year, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into a little bit. But Penix so far, absolute A+. uh, No complaints from any Husky fan. This last uh, game made one of the more impressive throws we've seen in a Husky uniform in a long time. He's lefty, rolling out to his right, full sprint, threw it about 35, 40 yards downfield to a wide receiver who was running straight up the sideline, bracketed by a safety and corner, placed it absolutely perfectly, hit him in stride. Just We're just not used to seeing that lately from, from Washington. <laughs> right. So all, all is, we're definitely still in the honeymoon period of the Michael Penix era. And, you know, it helps to keep your guy healthy too when he has taken zero sacks so far this season. But just like you alluded to, um, yeah, Michigan State, Pretty good at sacking the quarterback uh, in their first two games. Again, albeit against, you know, weak opponents. But what is Washington's offensive line looking like? I know that you have the tackle that is a back-to-back all-Pac-12 player in Jackson Kirkland. Is it the weak competition guys have faced? Or is the offensive line really full of some guys that can keep Penix upright for most of the game on Saturday? Yeah, well, probably the, the most interesting part of that start and how well we've done is that Jackson Kirkland hasn't played yet. Um, there you so go. that has okay. all come with him <laughs> out of the out of the lineup, um, which gotcha. one of the things with with Washington is that uh, our, our offensive line coach, uh, Scott Huff, has really brought in a lot of uh, four star talent over the last few years. And the expectation has really been that this is going to be a, a fantastic position group based on the talent. But last year, this was a unit that struggled to run the ball. It struggled to pass protect. Everything was there. And there was kind of a question of, is that is that the players or is that the scheme? What's going on? Huff got retained. Uh, he was the only coach that got retained this year. Um, still brought back a, a lot of talent on the offensive line. Weren't sure exactly how it was going to click. Jackson Kirkland hasn't played yet. Um, he is expected to play this Saturday per Coach DeBoer. So we'll see how gotcha. that goes. But uh, right now, every, everything is clicked with the offensive line. They're, most of the time, Penix is just able to to read a book out there before he has to throw the ball, um, which has been a, a very welcome sight. Um, right now, with Kirkland expected to come back, uh, the left tackle from the first two games, Troy Pautanu, is probably going to slide inside the left guard, um, and Kirkland's going to take that, that left tackle position. But uh, Roger Rosengarten is the right tackle who is making his first couple starts here. This year was super highly regarded coming out of high school uh, as a redshirt sophomore now. 
and uh, has had the highest pro football focus grade of any tackle in the Pac-12 uh, through his first two starts. So there's a lot of lot of optimism there. Um, but overall, this is a this is a line with a mix of experience. But um, it wouldn't necessarily shock me if against a, a better opponent they start to look a little bit more overwhelmed, and that was a little bit about the competition. But at the same time, this is a line that has a pedigree. Just about everybody except the the center who was a JUCO transfer is a is a four star on that line, um, or has had uh, substantial experience like Kirkland. So um, there's sure. reasons to think this is a really good offensive line, but there's still some also some question marks. No doubt. And so, you know, just moving away from you know, the big guys, let's talk about those skill position players between the run game and the wide receivers. Which group of those two are you more high on right now at this point of the season? Coming into the year, the wide receiver position was looked at as the as the best on the team. And so far, that hasn't necessarily seemed like that's not going to be the case. Uh, yeah. Roma Dunze and Jalen McMillan were very high four star recruits. They're now in their third season. Um, both of them have made huge impacts. Uh, Jalen McMillan had an 84 yard catch and run touchdown. Um, this last week, uh, behind them, there's a little bit more depth now, uh, with Jalen Polk transfer from Texas tech, Taj Davis, uh, got some starts last year due to injuries and has, has been pretty good. And Giles Jackson was the former Michigan player who you guys may remember, who was primarily a kick returner there. Um, was kind of a gadget player last year in his first season with Washington, but had over 100 receiving yards for the first time this last weekend as the number five receiver. Um, we'll point out that Roma Dunze, who's nominally the number one, was out this past week. Um, everything that he went through warmups, he had his helmet, but never went to the game. Everything from Coach DeBoer was that basically we were playing an FCS opponent with a huge game next week. And so he was slightly dinged up, but no reason to, to risk anything. So he should be fine coming Saturday. Uh, but the receiver position, definitely the strong quote. The, uh, the running back room during the spring, uh, there were only two healthy starting or two healthy scholarship running backs uh, all spring. They had a former walk-on quarterback taking most of the reps at running back during the spring because of all the injuries. So oh. <laughs> we really didn't know what to make of that situation. Uh, Aaron Dumas came in as a transfer from New Mexico. He has been completely relegated. And the two guys who've gotten the most time have been a transfer from Virginia, Wayne Talapapa, who's been the starter, as well as a Nebraska wide receiver transfer, who we've converted to running back and has kind of looked like the third down back in Will Nixon. And then Cam Davis is the, is the holdover, although... Uh, this last weekend, Richard Newton, who was another one of the holdovers and looked like he was the starter going into last year, uh, he tore his ACL last year, but uh, returned to action for the first time this last week. So there's kind of four guys who I think most Husky fans have, you know, kind of a, a B minus to B level of confidence in. Um, but okay. there's not that one guy who is just going to dominate a game. Um, it, you know, maybe that changes. But right now it really looks like there's a lot of guys who seem to be good, but nobody who's quite elite. And so across the board, hey, you know, quarterbacks balling out so far. Your offensive line is great. And that's without, you know, the back 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 12 player that I named that I thought of started the first two games. Uh, and then also the receivers seem to be doing well. Running backs seem to be doing well. What, if anything, worries you about your offense going into this game? If, if there is any, if there's not, then that's an answer as well. But anything keeping you up at night right now with offense? Yeah, I, I think the really it's still the offensive line performance mostly just because of how good okay. the, the Michigan State defensive line has been um, if Penix is running for his life back there, you know, a lot of what we saw uh, in the first few games isn't really going to be relevant, so that's that's my main concern, the one position group I didn't mention there were the tight ends uh, Devin Culp and Jack Westover have been kind of fine, but they've also been drop prone at times when they have been involved in the passing game, so doesn't look like that's going to be a, a big strength of the team. So if they're forced to go into heavy set formations in order to have to deal with the defensive line, um, I don't necessarily like that advantage. Washington's going to be at their strength when they're able to spread out the field with three plus receivers um, against Michigan State. So if they can't do that, um, that's that's where things get concerning. But when you score 45 and then 52 in your first two games, um, there's not going to be a lot of complaints. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
Uh, no, that's that's understandable. And we're going to hop sides of the ball here in a hot second. But, Max, I'm so sorry. i got to say goodbye to you one more time because i got to talk everyone's ear off about Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group. That is right. What a Big Ten sponsor Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group is because when it comes to land sales, it pays to have experts in your corner. And who better than Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group? They are your local farmland specialist. With decades of experience in corn belt ag- agriculture, no one knows the market better. Whether you're doing a 1031 exchange, expanding your operation, or selling a row crop farm, your local Acre Pro agent will walk the land with you and ensure the deal is done right. And great service is just the beginning at Acre Pro. They provide unparalleled land data, including soil ratings, elevation, flood zones, and land valuation across parcels so that you can get the full picture up front and be confident in the entire land market. Your agent will cater to each of your individual needs and help you navigate the complexities of buying and selling land so that the process is made simple. Experience the ease of Acre Pro by working with farmland specialists like Kyle Rule, Brady Hammond, Neil Herr, and Kyle Spray. Visit acrepro.com or call 765-587-3185 and talk to your local land expert today. Again, 765 765- Five eight seven three one eight five, and let's get back to breaking down the Washington Huskies with our guy Max Ruman. Hey, once again, thank you so much, Max, for your time, generosity, and your knowledge here. This is very in depth, very awesome, and we got a whole another side of the ball to go to the defense. Point blank, what is the strength of this defense? I know that you said that the secondary is kind of lacking in depth. Okay, that's going to happen when you lose two draft picks in the top forty last year. And you also said that – I forgot the adjective you used. Uh, the run defense couldn't get worse last year. It was not a nice thing you said about the run defense. I believe defense, it's abysmal, but, yeah. Okay, but yeah, okay, just abysmal, yeah. But, yeah. So, so between the two, what one's looking better right now between run defense and pass defense early on this season? Yeah, so far this year, it's a bit of a mix. The, the run defense has looked better against actual running backs. Both of the quarterbacks that uh, we've played against Kent State and Portland State have both been dual threat guys. And particularly Kent State had numerous times where he looked dead to rights in the backfield. Our defensive end just slipped right off him and then he scrambled forward for a first down. So gotcha. really dealing with a running quarterback has been the, the biggest deficiency that we've seen so far. Um, but as you mentioned, part of the reason this was such a bad run defense last year was that the the scheme that Jimmy Lake ran was despite having, as you mentioned, two corners who went in the top 40 in the draft, he never let them go on an island. He played a lot of off-ball coverage. He put five or six in the box and just let people run at will without committing extra resources and put self safety help over the top to help his two excellent corners, which was <laughs> baffling all season long. Uh, now those corners are gone. Uh, there's uh, Jordan Perryman was brought in from UC Davis uh, at corner and throughout fall camp, he looked like the best player on the field. He was complete shut down. Um, the first game against Kent State, he got beaten a couple times and then he got injured. Um, it looked at the time like it might be a non-contact knee injury, but uh, all comments from Kalen DeBoer sound like he's going to try to play on Saturday. So we'll see how he does. But behind him, we have a former walk-on who's starting and then a fifth-year former safety uh, who was highly recruited but has dealt with injuries and Julius Irvin, who are probably going to be the corner spots. So there, there really hasn't been a lot of guys who have stepped up kind of young depth charts. We've had for years corners just kind of growing off trees that become NFL draft picks, and it's not clear who that next person is. So it's a, it's a bit of a uh, an unusual, not unusual, but I guess unexpected situation for, for Washington to kind of reach for that next NFL draft pick and not have him ready made on the roster. Uh, the defensive line has been solid so far. Probably the best player on the defense has been Braylon Trice, who has been the closest thing to Jacoby Winman that, that the Huskies have. He was uh, had eight pressures and two sacks in 17 pass rush snaps this last week against Portland State, was completely unblockable. Um, he's a guy who the former off, uh, outside linebackers coach compared to Joe Tryon, who became a first round pick um, a few years ago. And everyone kind of said, I don't know about that, but he has certainly looked like it this year. Uh, coming into the season, Zion Tupuola Fatui, ZTF, was viewed as the as the best player probably on the team. He is not starting. Uh, he has come off the bench and did not look good against Portland State. He had that magical three game run in the 2020 COVID season where he had seven sacks. And last then towards Achilles last year, never looked fully healthy this year, still hasn't quite looked like that player that we saw previously. So um, although he was expected to, to be another potential All-American candidate, similar to, to a Jackson Kirkland, 
um, neither of them has really made an impact this year, despite the the good start, which has been one of the one of the surprises. It, you took my next question right out of my mouth is, hey, who's your Jacoby Winman? So it is Braylon Trice. Uh, that's that's definitely the number one guy. Is is there a guy that's even close to second behind Braylon Trice or is it just the the BT show all, all up in Washington? As a pass rusher, I mean, ZTF is the other guy who who you would think, okay. but he, he hasn't been off to a good start. Jeremiah Martin's the other starter at the defensive end spot. Um, he's a little bit more of a well-rounded hold the edge stout against gotcha. the run, but not an elite pass rusher type guy. If there is going to be another one, um, Savelle Smalls is a former five-star who has started to pick things up. Who's kind of been the fourth, fourth guy on the edge um, this year. And he's had some real flashes for the first time. And he's somebody who's local kid went to school in Seattle, him picking UW. He was the first five-star recruit of the Chris Peterson era. Um, everybody absolutely wants him to succeed. And he's, he's looking like he might be able to turn it on, but Really, the pass rush, Braylon Trice is is the guy that if he doesn't get there, um, it's not totally clear where the where the Husky pass rush is going to come from. Gotcha, gotcha. And you know, hey, being a Big Ten podcast, I, I can't let you go without talking about a little bit of special teams. I found the kicker that you guys have has only missed two field goals within forty yards in the last four seasons. Is that right? you guys got a stud at kicker? Am, am I getting this right? Because I really don't want to hear that right now. But if that's true, then. <laughs> We'll uh, about, Husky fans would not would not say that. Uh, so okay. Peyton Henry is the is the field goal kicker. He is in his fifth season. He is somebody who is reasonably reliable. I I don't know off the top of my head that might be true. <laughs> Only two misses under forty. Uh, but he he is not somebody who's going to go out there and nail a fifty yard field goal. If he has to go more than forty yards, it starts to get dicey. Uh, okay. Inside of that, perfectly serviceable. Um, but yeah, if this, if this game comes down to Washington having to kick a 50 yard field goal as time expired, Husky fans are not going to feel confident in that at all. <laughs> and right now, uh, walk on true freshman Grady Gross this last week took over the kickoff duties, uh, which is maybe a sign in not feeling as confident about Henry's leg. Um, gotcha. the, the Husky is, if you had to pick one weakness on the entire team over the first two weeks, it has consistently been the kickoff coverage. Um, so if, if there's one area that I think Husky fans are nervous about, um, there have been multiple returns that have gone out past the 30 have come close to midfield from Kent State wow. and Portland State. So um, I, we'll, we'll see if uh, Reed is healthy for, for Michigan State um, and what they do. But there's a chance that we could see, you know, a, a return out past midfield from Michigan State would not be surprising. That's not a bad way to end this chat right now. However, I do have one more question. And this is the most stereotypical question at the end of every preview. Hey, Max, you got a prediction for this game Saturday? <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll give one, although I don't, I, I, I don't feel overly confident about this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be the Homer. I'm going to go 31, 30 sure. Huskies pull it out in a, in a nail biter. Gotcha. Last second, 50 yard field goal. Is, is that your prediction? Are you just going to contradict everything you just no, said? I, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to go with defense <laughs> manages to make a stand. Thorn throws ah, an interception, okay. uh, at the end of the game. Perfect. Well, I mean, not not perfect in the sense that like I like your prediction, but hey, perfect in the sense that this was this is a great great preview here for Saturday. Uh, definitely, you know, the best one that we've had so far this season in this young season. But way to set the tone, Max. Putting the pressure on every other, every other person we're going to be talking to. The rest didn't, of the you season, didn't get so. a Akron Akron super in in depth level one. No. I'm going to let you know a secret. I, I didn't even try uh, because I kind of knew it was going to be a laugher the entire game. So um. Yeah. Feel a little, feel a little bad about that. Feel a little bad about that, but hey, I was vindicated. But a little vindicated. You were right. Win. Little, just a little vindicated, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I do feel a little cocky saying that. Like, I didn't even worry about it because it was going to be a laugher. Um, yeah, so just feel a little guilty. But hey, again, vindicated. It's all good in the hood. Um, Max, where can the fine people find your work? By the way, because you do great work. I was reading your stuff right before you hopped on, and you do awesome work. At drop the website, uwdogpound.com. Bang. Look at that, Max. Cannot thank you enough. And if you're going to the game, enjoy the game. And, uh, hey, you know, really quick, favorite place to go to for visiting Spartan fans to uh, visit in their visit to Seattle? Uh, for, like, around campus or just? Yeah, around, around campus. Around, around yeah. campus. Uh, I'd probably say Big Time Brewery if you're if you're looking for a place to go kind of pregame to, to hang out. Uh, that's a, I mean, local stop. It's about – five to 10 minute walk from campus right up the Ave, which is the main drag. So if you're looking for a spot, that's a good one. And then tell them Max sent you Max. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate it, my man. And uh, everyone right, else welcome. for listening and watching. Thank you so much. Go enjoy the rest of your day. Go enjoy the rest of your week. Love you all. Go green.